Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Last week, I brought you a very sassy and snarky ranking of the top 10 worst Nancy Drew characters, so this week I thought we'd brighten things up a bit and rank the top 10 best Nancy Drew characters. Honestly, this ranking was really hard. The Nancy Drew PC games are chock full of spectacular characters, and narrowing the list down to 10 that I feel are written especially well was a challenge. I did, however, eventually get there. So, without further ado, let's begin. First, please note that there are no culprit spoilers included in this video, but an in-depth discussion of the characters will result in some mild plot spoilers for the games discussed. Now, if you've watched any of my ranking and review videos in the past, you'll know that I like to have a system to try and keep things as objective as possible. My subjective opinions will inevitably find their way into this ranking, as I am only human, but I have devised a system that will hopefully keep things from getting too biased. In my opinion, a good Nancy Drew character has three qualifying characteristics in this order of importance. One, they're extremely memorable. These are characters that you find yourself quoting, visualizing, laughing with or at, and loving for better or worse. These characters have backstories and histories that make them feel real. Two, they're important to the overall mystery. Characters who provide crucial information to Nancy in an organic way instantly become more central to the overall game, which means the writing for them is stronger. And three, they're pleasant to interact with. This is the most subjective category, but frankly, a character needs to be written in such a way that I actually want to talk to them. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're nice or fun. As you'll see, there are some characters on this list that are super annoying, but they're supposed to be that way, which means the writing for them is stronger and I am therefore much more motivated to chat with them. I will rank each of the 10 characters with one to three stars in each of these three categories. Are they memorable? Are they important? And are they pleasant? Tie breaks will be done based on who received the highest score on the memorability or importance categories. And now, fellow detectives, let's honor the best of the best in order from least best to most best. I would also like to reiterate that this is not a list of characters that are my personal favorites, but a list of characters that I think are portrayed well in the series. And one more spoiler warning, there are no culprit spoilers in this video, but there will inevitably be mild plot spoilers for the 10 games mentioned. Number 10, Colin Baxter from Phantom of Venice. I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised that Colin made this list. He is personally one of my least favorite characters because he reminds me far too much of some of the worst people that I've encountered in life. He makes me squirm and I think I hate him, but that being said, that's what makes him such a well-written character. Colin feels like a very real character, and it is incredibly easy to have discussions with fellow detectives about him. He's kind of divisive. Do you sympathize with him? Do you feel sorry for him? Do you think he's cute or creepy? The fact that we can have such lengthy conversations about this guy means that there is a plethora of well-written material. Colin receives two stars in the memorable and importance categories. He's memorable because of how much he directly impacts Nancy's in-game experience. Mosaic tiles and sausages, anyone? His emotional volatility also makes him easy to recall. Who wouldn't remember a dude who screamed at them for quote-unquote breaking his microscope? He's also surprisingly important in that he gives Nancy a fair amount of information about the art and history of Venice, and gives Nancy a final clue towards the end of the game that helps her solve the case. He only receives one star in the category of pleasantness because there are many times that I want to avoid him. But again, that's really a testament to how well he's written more than anything else. He's not the best of the best, but his story is strong enough that he sneaks his way onto this list. Number nine, 
Tino Balducci from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Okay, raise your hand if you think I've gone crazy. Tino Balducci? On a list of the best Nancy Drew characters? Wizard Kitten, have you completely lost it? Now, I may have lost it, but not with respect to including Tino on this list. Allow me to explain. Tino receives three stars for being memorable, because let's be real, he's one of the easiest to recall characters by a long shot. This pompous, insufferable buffoon is hilariously incompetent, and interacting with him is a real treat because of it. Tino is clearly supposed to be the absolute worst, which somehow makes him one of the best? His anecdote about how he became famous, which he clearly tells to every single soul that crosses his path, is one of the funniest things in the Nancy Drew series, hands down. His blundering attempts to find Jay Curley's treasure are priceless. The way he talks down to Nancy and the Hardy Boys is so annoying, which I love. Tino only gets one star each for his level of importance and pleasantness. In fact, he actively makes the mystery harder to solve and is terribly frustrating to interact with. But his memorability makes him stand out in a way that is truly fantastic and deserves noting. Number 8, Alexei Markovic from Alibi in Ashes. The disgraced older detective down on his luck. He peaked in his younger years and now lives out his days in a dusty antique shop, bitter, cranky, and very much alone. Now that is someone that I want to learn more about. Alexei's backstory is so beautifully done, especially since it mirrors Nancy's in such a fantastic way in Alibi and Ashes. He receives two stars for being memorable, because he's such a curmudgeon, but it's eminently clear why. His crankiness is validated by the rest of the story, and despite all that's happened to him, we can see through his veneer to the softy underneath, and realize how much he really does want to help Nancy in her plight. He may be bitter, but not towards the people that don't deserve it. Alexei also gets two stars for being important, because his intel becomes crucial at the end of the mystery. I've also awarded Alexei two stars for being pleasant, because he's eloquent AF, and again, he's only rude to people who deserve it. Except maybe Bess. It's not her fault she's clumsy. Overall, this character is expertly crafted, and he holds his place well on this list. Number 7, Gunnar Tonneson from Sea of Darkness. A semi-retired fisherman with two friends, mug and chair. Gunnar is a mood, and I am here for his sassy, dramatic, and cranky personality in all of its glory. Gunnar is a standout character for multiple reasons, but perhaps the biggest is his incredibly touching backstory. When we learn about Gunnar's past, I am on the verge of tears. When it comes right down to it, Gunnar is a big softy who has been through a lot, and because of his views of masculinity, really hasn't dealt genuinely with any of his pain. For this reason, Gunnar gets three stars for being memorable. He's one of the most realistic characters in the entire series, and I love how fully fleshed out his character arc ends up being. I would listen to the story about how he lost his three fingers any day, and considering how tangential that story is, that's saying a lot. This also leads into Gunnar receiving two stars for being pleasant. He's a bit of a grump, sure, but knowing what he's been through, I'd be a bit of a grump too. He ends up being more endearing than anything, and all I want to do is give this poor guy a big hug. Gunnar only receives one star in the importance category because when all is said and done, he doesn't really do too much for the overall mystery. But what he does do is make up for that by adding to the story in a beautiful way and bringing a richness and deepness to this mystery that many of the other games lack. Number 6, Beatrice Hotchkiss from Treasure in the Royal Tower. The formidable Hotchkiss is a drumstick and couscous loving, wacky, scattered oddball, and fans love her for it. Now, I personally am not Hotchkiss's biggest fan, and I think this is because her two phone appearances in later games are a bit frustrating. But I cannot deny the greatness of her performance in the series' fourth game. This is where the writers really solidified what makes a good character. 
Hotchkiss receives three stars for being memorable because I legitimately cannot think of chicken drumsticks, ski boots, or Marie Antoinette without thinking about Professor Hotchkiss. She's extremely quotable, and even though her backstory is minimal, we learn enough about Hotchkiss just by interacting with her and reading her books. At her core, Hotchkiss is an extremely passionate scholar, who really doesn't care how often she is dismissed or ridiculed by her colleagues. She voraciously consumes history like the food that she is literally always talking about, which, girl, same. I get it. I can relate. Hotchkiss gets an additional two stars for being important because, without her knowledge of French and of Marie Antoinette, Nancy would have had a much harder time solving this mystery. I can only give Hotchkiss one star for being pleasant because, while she is a lovable weirdo, she can sometimes come on very strong in a way that diminishes some of the realism of her character. Still though, Hotchkiss is a force to be reckoned with, and she definitely deserves a spot on this list. Number 5, Miwako Shimizu from Shadow at the Water's Edge. I thought long and hard about which characters from Shadow at the Water's Edge would make the cut for this list, because really the depth of the character development in that game is mwah, chef's kiss. I ultimately decided that Miwako is the standout, with Yumi being a little too unrealistic and Rentaro's ultimate arc having a few too many plot holes at the end. Miwako, in contrast, is the understated hero of this game. She receives three stars for being important because she is a bridge between Nancy and the rest of the family. She provides vital context that Takai and Yumi both kind of skirt around. She's also the reason that the Ryokan is even still operating, and it's her dedication that allows Nancy to actually be there to solve the case in the first place. She gets two stars for being pleasant because it's clear how much Miwako cares and how hard she is trying. I often feel so bad for her character, and the fact that the game can make me empathize with a computer screen is a plus. Furthermore, she gets an additional two stars for being memorable. She isn't as memorable as some of our other characters, but again, she's the quiet, unassuming glue that holds this game together. When I think of the Ryokan, I think of Miwako behind that desk, and of all of the little things that I've learned about her the tidbits from her childhood, and the people taking advantage of her kindness. She's a lovely character, and one who I think is often underrated. Number 4, Dexter Egan from Treasure in the Royal Tower. I'll say it again, this is the game where the team really figured out what a good character looks like. As such, we have two characters from Treasure in the Royal Tower on this list, and I think both are well-deserved. At first glance, Dexter looks and acts like a grumpy hotel receptionist. He sends Nancy on errands and complains about how much there is to do. But then, through a series of beautifully executed discoveries, we learn that there is so much more to Dexter than we could have possibly known. Dexter gets three stars for being important, because his connection to the castle and to the castle's original owner provides crucial backstory that centers and grounds the entire mystery. This somewhat ridiculous plot has a deep level of heart and emotion that would not have been there without Dexter. This leads into Dexter receiving two stars for being memorable. I couldn't quite give him three stars because his personality doesn't stand out as dramatically as others, but his understated story and character arc are a breath of fresh air. I also give Dexter two stars for being pleasant, because while he's kind of curmudgeon at the start, he really opens up to Nancy as the mystery continues on, and reveals himself to actually be a very sweet, gentle, and kind old man. Number 3, Harper Thornton from Ghost of Thornton Hall. I don't know about you guys, but when a grungy lady in a basement cackles at me about throwing children down a well, I have a hard time forgetting her. Harper is one of those characters that could easily be considered ridiculous when you examine the way she talks and behaves, but that's actually the point. There are a lot of characters in the time of Nancy Drew games that I affectionately refer to as the modern era, who talk in a way that are not at all realistic. It doesn't make sense for most of those characters, but it does for Harper because it is built into her storyline that she's a little, well, 
unpredictable. Harper gets three stars in the category of memorability because she is just too wacky to forget. Everything about her stands out, from her hair to her mannerisms to her, again, unpredictability. She's real weird, and that makes her brilliant. She also receives three stars for being important because she is crucial to this case. First, the case wouldn't happen without her. Second, basically all of the plot movement is spurred on by Harper. I can only give Harper one star in the category of pleasantness because her sporadic way of communicating can often be a bit much. Going off the rails in a conversation is fine periodically as a way of defining a character's personality, but doing it too often can become grating. As such, Harper may not be the most pleasant character around, but she is one of the most memorable and critical characters that this entire series has to offer. Number two, Henry Bollet from Legend of the Crystal Skull. Henry is pretty tragic, to say the least. This poor guy has lived through a great deal of trauma, all of which we learn about in organic and touching ways. What makes Henry stand out and what really earns him three stars for being memorable is that we don't just learn about his hurt, we see it. There are little touches throughout this mystery that make Henry a truly memorable character. From crying in the cemetery to overhearing a phone conversation with his toxic girlfriend. It's easy to see why Henry would find himself in a relationship like that, and the way he opens up to us throughout the game is so heartbreakingly vulnerable. It's genuinely really beautiful, and it makes it hard to forget Henry, especially since his aesthetic is also quite unique. Henry also gets two stars for being an important character, because it's his connection to Dr. Bollet that really gets all the puzzle pieces to fit together in the end. Connect that with Henry's complicated relationship to Dr. Bollet, and you have even more tear-inducing character development to mull over. Henry also gets two stars for being pleasant, because he presents with a refreshing amount of honesty that feels so natural for his character. Henry is literally crying out for unconditional love no matter how much he pretends that he's fine without it, which makes him beautifully complex, sweet, and true. What a gem. And finally, number one, Mel Corbelis from Warnings at Waverly Academy. I might be biased here because Mel is personally my favorite character, but I think there's an obvious reason for that. She's a really good character, and in my opinion, the best character. For your consideration, I present my argument. Mel receives three stars for being memorable because out of all of the girls at Waverly, all of whom are excellently developed, Mel still stands out from the crowd. She's an individual. She marches to the beat of her own drum, and that is not exactly what Waverly, an elitist East Coast boarding school, really encourages. Mel is memorable because she doesn't quite fit in, but also because that is something that I think a large majority of fans can relate to. Mel is true to who she is and is mocked for it. And who among us didn't connect with that on some level? Mel's memorability also connects to her pleasantness, another category in which she receives three stars. Scattered throughout the game are these wonderful moments with Mel. The milk and cookies debacle, her genuine plea for help with the plagiarized paper, her obvious love and care for the Blackwood Society, her simultaneous connection to and disdain for tradition. Mel is just such a genuine character with histories, vulnerabilities, and hilarious one-liners. If ever anyone enters my room through the wall, I will quote Mel Corbelis and my life will be complete. I can only give Mel two stars for being important because she is about equally as crucial to solving the case as the other Waverly girls, which says a lot about the strength of Waverly's plot as well. Still, I think Mel is the perfect combination of relatability, realism, and sass and I think she more than deserves her place at the top of this list. And there you have it, fellow detectives, a list of the 10 best characters in the Nancy Drew series. 
Again, it's really a testament to the quality of these games that it was so hard to narrow this list down to only 10 characters. So let me know if you agree with my rankings or if you think there are other Nancy Drew characters who deserve to be here. You can also like this video if you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like it. And I would absolutely love it if you were willing to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims content. We're starting to get close to 500 fellow detectives, which blows my mind. You all mean the world to me, and I can't wait to talk more Nancy Drew and Sims with you all. Thanks for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.